<laughs> Welcome, one and all. It's Wednesday night, and you're here with us on String Theory. We just happen to have a few stragglers sitting by here, coincidentally, just roaming through the neighborhood, tossing high end boutique guitars out the window like candy, hitting people indiscriminately in the head as they walked along the road with their coyote stick and their backpack and their all that stuff there's a whole there's a road full of bodies laid out by the Guillaume de Silva Robin Boucher that's right that's him right there he's not Robin anymore he's actually real there he is <laughs> we are proud to be with you we also have a few surprises up our sleeves yet which we haven't told you about, which we will. But first, we have to talk to our partners. Coincidentally, the first one on the list is Boucher. <laughs> Levy's Leather Straps. Guillaume's other line of work, along with that in sheep training. He does that as well. <laughs> Levy's Leather Straps, G&G &G Music, <laughs> Citadel Music, Brickhouse Guitars, K&K &K Sound, Gallagher Recording King, Alvarez Gieri, Yamaha Music Canada, James Martin Instruments in Kilkenny, Ireland, Cody Guitars, right here, he's a local man, Diderio Canada, The Art, Apollo Picks, Epiphone, Gibson, Close Guitars, Blue Chip Picks, Tone Slab, one of my favorite, <laughs> LR Bags, our friends at LR Bags, Maestro Hose and Guitars from Singapore, George Crackett, who we will be seeing in about a week, playing down his neck of the woods, me and my buddy Dave Gunning, as you hear me talk about him a lot, he'll be around to see us uh, murder a whole bunch of our own songs, and the Nova Scotia SPCA, and a brand new partner, which will be... Uh, will be uh, appearing very shortly on the on the show. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let the cat out of the bag. Zagger Guitars has come on board, and I just received an instrument from them, and uh, it was very impressive and different. So we're going to be reviewing that and giving your opinion on what they're doing over there out in... Uh, they're in the Midwest in somewhere, Oregon, or they're in some weird... Lincoln, Lincoln Nebraska. Nebraska. Lincoln, Nebraska, yeah. So that's cool, yeah. and uh, the only thing left to say now is welcome to String Theory. Here's John and Chris and Ginger. And of course, Chris isn't here, but we have a much better looking Chris. Yes, everyone's commenting on how well he cleaned up tonight. Yes, <laughs> this, this is our new Chris. <laughs> <coughs> He's much better looking and has a thicker French accent than Chris. Much thicker. That's yes. why, that's why um, you, you chose him. <laughs> yeah. I'll do my oh. best. <laughs> so. To be sitting in front. That's right. Instead of me. Yes. I, don't even, I understood. <laughs> I'm not sure that this is even mine, but I'm going to drink it anyway. And tonight we're sponsored by Painted Boat Beer Company. Lager beer, which I'm enjoying one right now. <sighs> kind of tastes like somebody shit a lime tree. Anyhow, on to the first Christian, just to get right into things. We gotta go right, you know. We're all here. Must have put ourselves to work. <laughs> uh, we got a stupor chat from Stephen Baker. A stupor chat from a Stephen Baker. Chat. How are you doing, Mr. Baker? Uh, Mr. Baker? He's got some new uh, bath salts. He's in the tub. Oh, good Lord. Uh, he says, happy Wednesday. Nice shirts, everyone. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. We do our best. Some, some of us are dressed better than others. shirt comment. <clears throat> okay, next. Uh, we got a super chat from Crawdad Watson. Crawdad, welcome back. Uh, do you know how to play Country Boy by Ricky Skaggs? Yes, I do. Whether I can do it or not is Could you give us beyond, your best interpretation thereof? Beyond the pale. I don't know. I used to play it. I used to. I learned that entire solo when that album first came out in the '80s. So I would have been, I don't know, 13 or 14 years ago, years old at the time. But 
tune is I have to sing it anyway. In fact, if you play the Country Boy album backwards, it's Ricky Skaggs tuning for five minutes. <laughs> that was the intro, something like that. But I used to, I, used, I learned that even the solo. Uh, I can't remember the rest of it, but I had all those, I had all those licks memorized when I was a kid, because Skaggs was when he came out, validated every bluegrass player, mm -hmm. right? Because he was number one in the country charts playing hot guitar, hot acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, Skaggs is the man. I actually got to play a concert with him a few years ago in, in Cape Breton, and it was awesome. We both played Mando though, yeah. so yeah. But yeah, what a good memory. What a musician. Yeah, good memory. What a musician. Incredible. Thanks for the question and making me embarrass myself on national television. Let's go do best. <laughs> okay. Okay. Next. National television. Uh, I got a question from John Rotonto. That's it's new. like it's like Toronto, but Rotonto. Rotonto. <laughs> Rotonto. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> hey JB, I bought two Yamaha FG guitars, 820 and 830. Very good guitars for under 500 American. They are. Also, I bought an Epiphone Master Built Texan Faded Cherry. Oh, sweet. A sweet guitar for around $800. Yep. Have you ever used Rosewood Picks? I love the playing with you and John Chapman. Stellar, love you, man. Thank you. And, and I can't, I, I know that uh, if Dave was here, he could tell you that. Um, he he has tried some of the wood the wood picks. There's a company in Canada here. I think they're in BC or, but there's actually more than one. But there's a couple of companies in Canada that that make custom made wooden picks, and they use everything from maple to rosewood to every ebony whatever. Mm. I can't use wooden picks because I play so hard at such a bizarre angle for flat picking. That I would like a wooden pick would just disintegrate <clears throat> after six tunes. So mm. I would literally just saw the end off it. Yeah. So, but for sort of standard, you know, Dave might be able to tell you better, but for standard kind of rhythm playing for the right for the for a specific kind of tone that you might be looking for, wood picks are a viable source of that, uh, but I don't think they last very long. You even just rhythm playing would wear them out. But there's something that's cool in the studio. If you're gonna, if you're looking for a certain kind of tone and you want a woody, earthy, quiet, no sound, right? This wood has none of that. Mm. It's just straight mm. air, right? Mm -hmm. like, Airy. But you'd wear the. Cr I mean, I can't use them. I tried. I was really excited. Oh, I can use a pick, and then they're gonna. They endorse me. They're like, hey, give me a take hundred. And I was like, Fuck, no, no. They can't. Won't no, they won't yeah. work. Yeah. Not for me. Other people maybe, and yes, because I know people who use them. Mm. So, but I have a funny sinking suspicion that they probably have to change picks every show. After a whole show of, of yeah, mm. it's really not gonna hold up as well as as casein or celluloid or tortoise or any of the man-made polymers that that companies use, like Apollo and Blue Chip and Tone Slab, and yeah. those things are designed like this is a new casein pick from D'Addario, which is the Chris Teeley. And it's it's a great casing pick, but it ha the only thing I don't like about this pick is because it's casing and it has the tendency to mold and warp in your fingers, so it gets a bend in it. Uh, it gets concave, yeah. and you have to keep turning it over uh, to, keep, uh, keep, to keep the warp from getting worse. Because yeah. after a while, it literally wants to fold in on itself from yeah, your yeah. body heat, yeah. and that's casein does that, right? right? Yeah. Blue chip and tone slab and all those—they don't do that. And yeah. Wigan, Wigan picks are also 
a man-made fibrous polymer that has no it, nothing affects it no. not heat moisture or anything right no. and uh and you definitely need some of this stuff if you're using casein pickers grip i use this stuff it's amazing and they come in a lipstick now where did that thing go anyway ginger the uh, no we, I, don't <laughs> we, I don't know if we bought it over i'm not sure that's it yeah. there you go this is the new pickers grip which is really cool because all you do is just pop that up like a chapstick and you mark your pick and you're good for the whole show. You, put it on your lips? Uh, you can't talk for a few hours because <laughs> your face is stuck together. <laughs> Try this stuff out. Picker, <coughs> Picker's grip is is. There's been all kinds of tricks with this stuff over the years. That like they gave thing like pick gum and yeah. gorilla snot. All that, there was a thing called gorilla snot. Really? really? Yeah, that's what it was called, and it was like a. Good name. It was glue. Gross glue, yep. Picker's grip. They make out of all natural, like beeswax and all natural material. Mm. So the amazing thing is, if you put this on your pick, and <clears throat> you use it, your pick is stuck to your hand like glue. But you take your fingers and do that on your jeans, and it's, it's gone. gone, and there's no residue. Okay. I don't know how they do it. Oh, Same thing with the pick. You just rub it on your pants or your strap. Completely clean. There's no there's no marks. Right. I don't know how they do it. But it works like a charm. So if you like casing and picks like I do, that's that's the thing to have. Mm. I carry that one with me. Just found this again, so I'm taking that with me too. Anyhow, there's your pick, elongated pick answer. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Guillaume knows the deal. <laughs> Watch the show a few times. <laughs> uh, super chat from Jamie Reed. Jamie Reed. Uh, there's royalty in tonight. Yes, there is. <laughs> Just wanted to say hi to you boys. Robin, what's your favorite body style to make and favorite wood? I would say OM. And, uh, well, I have different favorite tone wood. For different I would reasons. say that by these times, <laughs> it's maple. Yeah. Uh, but, of course, I, I, I like uh, work with... Uh, East Indian rosewood, mahogany, uh, bubinga, yeah, uh, some coco bolo, uh, coco bolo uh, yeah, Madagascar rosewood, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of that has to do with the body shape you're building, yeah, right, yeah. So you you might choose something different for a dreadnought that you would not choose for an OM. Exactly, you're right. Or take a wood that's not supposed to go with the body size and build it of that too, right? Yeah. We've done that. Yeah, you have. I got a couple. Co yeah, <laughs> and that's cool that you're able to do that, right? So, mm. yeah. Mm. Good question. Yeah. Good question. Okay, next. Playing with multi angles. Uh, we have a question from Eli Patrick. Eli Patrick Music. Okay. He is a proud owner of a boucher that we delivered to him by hand. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes, sir. Yeah. Wow. Um,. Hey everybody, how well do you think the Aston Origin would work in a live one mic application for a bluegrass band? I don't think it would. It's not. It's not that type of microphone. It's uh, it's for studio use only. Uh, again, you know, if Dave was here, he knows all about those things. He's actually outfitted some of the mics that's in the studio. He gave me, like the room mics, he gave me, and we 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 got them sorted out together. He, the reason I use these is because of him. We we. We went and did a session with Catherine McCullen and saw these for the first time. And then when I opened the studio, he uh, he gave me, I think he gave me one as well. That, well um, this might be the one, actually, that he that gave is, me yeah. for Christmas. Yeah. Right. And then I bought a second one, and I just, I love them. They're just the most incredible, most uh, versatile mic. It doesn't matter exactly what, what you play through it. It just <laughs> sounds good. Mm. And it sounds good like this. It picks up vocals and voice and voice over, just like you're sitting like right in front of it. And you can be five feet away, and it picks up everything you're doing. You yeah, know? It works well. You know, it's too bad Dave wasn't here, right? Because he he could show he could actually probably show an example of maple guitars with because I got a maple I got a maple boucher. You do? Uh, yeah, I, I I know Dave. What about Dave? Uh, Dave, I know Dave likes one. He's he's, he's he, likes he, lo maple? he loves maple. He loves maple boucheries. He told you that. Oh yeah. Well, what do you think, Dave? I love this guitar. 
Yeah, what else do you think? Guitars for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Perfect. We haven't named the one that Dave's playing, but this one, of course, as you all know, if you saw the review of this, this is Lancelot. It is. This is the most incredible <coughs> dreadnought guitar I think I've ever seen in my entire life. This guitar. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, there you go. Beautiful. Very so, cool. guess what? <coughs> Boucher's don't suck. They don't. Yeah. <laughs> so good to hear. Thank you, David. Thank Big you, hand for Dave Gunning. Thank you. Snuck in Thank on us. Yeah. Awesome. Me and David Cheers. are going out in the road um, tomorrow. Yeah. So uh, just for hell of it, I don't would never normally do this, but I, I'm going to do it tonight. We just start cause. in New Hampshire. Right? <clears throat> yeah, we start in New Hampshire on the 20th. We're at the Borrowed House concert in uh, Plasto, New Hampshire. 21st, we're at the Medallion Opera House Ooh. in Gorham, New Hampshire. On the 22nd, we're at the Brook Music Series in Granville, uh, Granby, Connecticut. 23rd, Deer Creek, yeah. Darlington, Maryland. The 25th, we're at the Station Inn in Nashville. So if you guys are down there, we know all kinds of people there. This is my and Dave's first time to play the inn. I've played it by myself and played it with Gareth Pearson. And Jeff just loves Canadian musicians. So he hired me and Dave to come down on a Wednesday. And then 27 and 28, we're at the Pine Cedar at Dollywood for two days. Yeah. So there'll be six shows there. We do three, is it three three shows a day, right? Uh, three or four. Really? That many? Yeah, it's a lot. I didn't, I didn't realize. They're that. short sets. I mean, I never miss a gig. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> short sets. <laughs> okay. They're like 40-minute sets. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it starts at 10 in the morning. and. Pff. Okay. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's going to be fun. 
And then Dave's going to head home, and I'm going to uh, Murfreesboro on the 29th to be at Gallagher Guitars, where I'm conducting a master guitar workshop there. And then uh, we're going to do some, some filming and messing around in the shop there on Monday, and then Tuesday and Wednesday, I'll be at the Gibson Garage in mm -hmm. Nashville, hanging out with the boys. I think testing out one of the new Lloyd Lower reissue Manlins that just oh, came wow. out. That's going to be unreal. They're, they're sending one down from the custom shop in Montana, I believe. That's mm. what Bill Monroe played, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. That's, that's what it's based on, yeah, his so. original mandolin. Yeah. So, yeah. Massive. So, yeah, so be sure. We're, 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 don't miss this because him and I, we, we never get anything right. And it's really entertaining to watch us fall all over each other on the stage <laughs> and, you know, curse and throw picks and it's good we love each other yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey Bert <laughs> one last for the other forgets the words it's a whole oh thing. yeah days of stuff and I don't know <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah that's great the, the other day it was you yeah I don't know what show we were at you were he just forgot well, everything yeah, and, and to the worst of Johnny Armstrong uh, yeah yeah lot, oh one yeah the ones that we supposed to know the, the best oh yeah for yeah, six years yeah, been singing yeah, that song yeah, seven years we got all we nailed all the new ones yeah Oh yeah, all the hard ones. We oh got. yeah, yeah. But that one when we knew by heart was just like, yeah. yeah. JP sings, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it was great. And of course, you know the secret of the universe was divulged in that particular verse. That's correct. But we did tell people that the the, the correct version was on this the recording. That's right. shit. Find out the real story. Buy a CD. Yeah. So there you go, boys. There's a couple of wicked maple guitars for you. I'll tell you. Mm. Dave's yeah, playing. Dave's playing the new Grand, uh, the new Grand Reserve. This is beautiful. Let's hold it up to the. All torrified maple and torrified Adirondack top. It's and uh, a, just an incredible guitar. Mine's just a beast with no torrification. Torrification, but. Torrification. Torrification. Yeah. yeah, this one is a prototype, and uh, we're glad that Dave. Uh, yeah, I might just keep this fuzz, if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> don't be surprised if you see me playing this guitar. Yeah. <laughs> In the near future. <laughs> Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it kind of got Dave ruined all over it, I think. Yeah. But that's, what, what a tremendous job you've done. Yeah. Thank you. Oops. It's just amazing. Easy. Every every time I just... We, we've been filming videos here for two days, and I got a chance to review three of these Grand Re Reserves, and then we had a great fireside chat with me and Robin that's it's all coming out in the next few weeks uh, look for them closer to Christmas and uh, yeah it's, it's just been great I, I, nah. everything that you come out with is exciting like I just can't help it it's, just, it's not it's unexpected too I would have never thought that this would happen even though I saw one of these at the G and Joe the G, yeah I saw the early prototype of this mm -hmm. At the okay. G&G show, and I thought, oh, my God, are they kidding? Mm -hmm. Torrifying maple? That's not possible, right? Mm -hmm. but, but yes. There it is. There it is. So, yeah, it's uh, pretty awesome. So Something new. Keep your eyes open. The Grand Reserve, it's a brand new uh, line of the Boucher, uh, and it's going to stay. It's and not, it was supposed to be a secret for another month. That's but right. It's a grand release. It doesn't oh matter. God. It doesn't now matter. Now you've seen it. No, it's, it's, it's only it's, just... It's, it's just, been born. It's just us and the Kiwanis. It's, uh, it's just a secret, a everybody. Of us. Yeah, don't tell the other 400,000 people. That don't tell them. <laughs> act surprised. Yeah, yeah, act yeah, surprised. Act surprised. surprised. press release coming. That's right. <laughs> Go dang. I didn't oh, know I that was... I never expected there. that would happen. That's amazing. <laughs> but you know it never, never hurts to have a little bit of advance <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh yeah cause yep. that's that's, sure. that's the way it goes now that's people perfect. will be now there'll be twice as many people on the review videos yeah. waiting they'll just be waiting to see the close-ups and <laughs> but you heard it it's yeah monster guitar mm. so yeah. next yeah. <laughs> uh we have a highlighted chat from blair Spinson. blair Spinson back again one of our grand prize winners, actually, too. Our first one. Yep, very first one. Mm. Uh, gentlemen, you were so gracious on Jeremy's visit to your shop. Mm. Oh, yes. The guitar hunter. Mm -hmm. The guitar punter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Shit happens. It buys him. Oh, out the door. There you go. <laughs> that was fun. 
It was. Fun. I like Jeremy. He's yeah, a good he's dude. Good. He's a very good guy. <clears throat> he's a cool dude. Yes. He's, cool. he's, he's moves, very nice, he, and and we enjoyed his visit. He he funny. he knows what he's doing. He gets a, he's. If you want to see a, a huge cross section of different instruments, that's the thing to watch because he gives he gets into everything. Yeah, he does. So and, and love to Jeremy. Yes, love to Jeremy, and and he did a couple of really cool videos about the the workshop, and yeah, and he did a good job. Dropped one of your guitars. It was great. <laughs> love it. it was beautiful. Yeah. Okay, next. Yes. <laughs> I had a super chat from Corey McCormick. <laughs> Jeremy Hunter. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Did you buy? Tai Chi. I just started took up Tai Chi. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Robin, thank you for the tour you gave my wife and I a few months ago. I ended up buying a third boucher on top of that on top of that trip uh, from G and G. Still dreaming of that dragon rosewood guitar you showed us pictures of. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ooh. That that guitar you built there. This is a guitar. This is a yeah, guitar. Ten oh, years ago, oh, or yeah. a, a banker in Switzerland, something like that. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. The, the figure in the, the, figure. On the back. Yeah, on the back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow! It looked like a dragon's face. Really? Yeah. Really? Oh my yeah. God! It was, yeah. Special. Oh, I, I See, this is a world I'm not even aware of. Like I, I know that you build one-off customs, and it's almost a sin. Well, you this, should, you should take pictures of all those guitars and put them in a book someday. Of the guitars that no one else would have seen except you and the customer, right? Uh -huh. If they would be okay with that. That would be amazing to see the stuff that you put together that's a one-off custom order. We, 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 we used to make custom guitars before the new... Because uh, everything was custom. And yes, then at some point we, we created the, the different series in 2017. Mm -hmm. So back in the day when that guitar was created, it was sort of a custom, but everything was custom. Yeah. So, but but that that set was just uh, unique and, yeah. and and quite special. And but you know what I'm saying, like the stuff, not just custom, but really custom. When a guy comes to you and says, "I got forty thousand dollars to spend. Here's what I want." Like well, that sort of thing. We've done a few of those, yeah. but usually people will will go through, oh, yeah. you know, the ultimate pack and stuff like that. Yeah, and, yeah. And we have pictures of many, yeah. many of those. There's that that would be a good idea anyway, just to yeah. to document what, all the things that you've done. I try. Holy God. That is actually quite an accurate description. That's the back of the guitar. It does actually like if you can get close enough to that to see get an idea You're gonna have to get it looks like a dragon's head yeah. the wings the feet yeah that's crazy <laughs> that's cool and this is before you actually built it this is just the two pieces of wood side by side yeah yeah very unique wow that's unbelievable <laughs> Yeah. Thank I you for mean, buying a third guitar. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you for, yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you for all these guitars. Okay, next. Uh, super chat from Stephen Baker. Stephen Baker. It says, nice to see Dave using nearly nearly the whole fretboard for a change. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> so he's up to boost your confidence, isn't he? Yeah. It was a great question. <laughs> <laughs> Connect. Um, a comment from Luke for Robin. Uh, he says, hello, guys. Robin, I, I love my new BG 152 GM. Looks yeah. and sounds amazing. Yeah. Thank you, Luke. Thank it's you a so cool much. guitar. Yeah. You're probably going to get a lot of that tonight, Robin. <laughs> Sometimes these people don't have very much opportunity to... to talk to you when they know you're sitting right there right we got a we got an email from luke and and he he was uh, super uh, happy with his guitar yeah yeah guy uh what is from uh, ohio music oh ohio in new brunswick yeah 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 nice uh dreadnought madagascar yeah awesome nice guitar. we should write we should enjoy maybe that's what what i'll do in my twilight years is write a book about all the boucher owners Picture, smiling, little story about how they found oh, out. Could be cool. What a yeah, coffee table look that would make, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Guys who have more than one, you know, posing with all their bouchets. 
I need to pose. In a, need to, I would need to pose in a football stadium. Let's <laughs> <laughs> do one of those shots from we above. Get the center here. page, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd have to be a, and would fold out several times. <laughs> yeah, it would just be me and all the guitars, right? Yeah. Three beaners. Twenty-five miles. Connect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, question from Kenny Holden. Kenny Holden, my boy. Oh, Kenny. And Robin, can you give a hint on the next private stock guitars, body shapes, or woods? Hmm. Well, we already did. Yes. We just did. Mm. We, we did, and now we we came out with the the, the, the Grand Reserve series. Yep. And, yeah. So which will launch in December. Yeah. New Year. Mm. Yeah. Yep. So definitely keep an eye out for them as soon as they become available. The dealers that you know, like G and G or Citadel or wherever you are in the country, there'll be somebody nearby. In the world. In the world, you'll you'll know they'll start to show up. But what we can say is that this new series will be made in every format, so in every size. Every size. Yep. So uh, there will be one every, of each. Yep. You have OM, Dreadnought, Jumbo, Parlor. I know there's a Parlor coming in Triple O. So if people connect the dots, I think they, they get it. They get yeah. what's coming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I would say, I would say we'd have full full market saturation by next summer. You know, people will be <laughs> looking for these things all the time. It'll be awesome. When you get it, when you do get a chance to actually hold one and play it, it will alter your life. It's it's just one of those kind of guitars that you play it and go, whoa, this is what I need to be a better player, to be more inspired, to do. And the, it's the harder things too. I can't do on this guitar, I can do on this one. It comes down to that, you know. Yeah, and, and they have like a, a kind of a unique voice, right? It's, yeah. Uh, it's just like a maple on on steroids. It's like rosewood on steroids. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Next. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question from Maurice O'Coy Music. Hi. Hey. How you doing, Maurice? Uh, has Bucci Guitars ever considered making an eight-string acoustic? I have a Gibson Hummingbird 12-string, uh, strung as an eight-string. It's taken a while to get comfortable with the wide neck. I'm assuming by eight strings he means eight to string. double the double B, the, the B and E, the, the G and the oh the, the middle D. ones, right? I guess, I guess yes, so. yes, yes. Mm. Mm, perhaps, yeah. but you know, it's not the. Yeah, so many things to do. Us, but the, my thoughts on those kind of guitars are, are that they're a bit useless because why would you bother if if you want that sound i understand why people would might how they might use that type of guitar with those two strings doubled to do certain lead things or whatever mm. but the money shot on, on double course guitars is always the bottom strings the e and the a when they're when, on a 12 string right mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. such it's such a great sound mm. And you're not getting that by doubling the center strings. There's nothing there. If you don't play those strings. The real money is in the bottom, right? So why not just buy a good 12 string, right? Well, we make some really good 12 strings. I guess you do. Yeah. yeah. I have one. You have one. It's a smoker, and it's an OM. Yeah. And I will be using it at the new the Lightfoot concert I'm doing in February with the symphony. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, its name is Lightfoot. Its so name is Lightfoot, yeah. that guitar. It is. It's one of the best 12 strings I've ever played in my life. The only thing I ever played that was better than that was a Jumbo Boucher 12. It was the <laughs> only thing I ever played that I liked better than Blackfoot. It was that Kemp Shore. Yeah, remember that true. thing? I yeah, couldn't I keep my hands yeah. off that thing. You almost bought it. I did. It was some close. So close. It was so close. Yeah. Because, but I don't use 12 string enough. Never use it live, mm. except for these applications. Mm. And uh, only really use it in the studio. So I didn't think, I thought it'd be a, it's kind of a sin for me to take all this guitar into a room and it never goes out, yeah. right? So the yeah. o, I, I say I'm gonna stick with the OM, I got the studio for the studio, I got it for the things I need live, Yeah. right? So, mm -hmm. Still would love to have the jumbo, but it's... You never know. Yeah, you never know. Maybe we'll send you one for testing one day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that what they call it now? <laughs> Testing. Testing. Yeah. I think we should have I some scotch on that. <laughs> Just to see if it can... can if I can handle it? Yeah, if you can, you know... This might increase your ability to send out testing units. 
I, I, I'll try to send it to your capacity to acquire <coughs> them. Yes. Yes. Yes, perhaps this will help us both in our endeavors. <laughs> well, that's good stuff. That's Bowmore 15. Oh, 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 oh yeah. that's good. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Chair next. Uh, oh, it's smoky. Oh, we got one from Mr. Cam McMaster. Cam Clam Disaster. Mm-hmm. How's Clam? I guess he's good. I'm assuming you're going to come see me and Dave at some point over the next 10 days, or I'm going to beat you with a wet noodle and a bag of <laughs> dead mackerel. He says Plast New Hampshire is literally 10 minutes from his house. Yeah, well, what's wrong with So maybe wrong you with have you? to invade his house. Well, oh. that could happen too. I don't know. But you yeah, should also we go hope to the show. We better, you better be at one of these shows, Buster. You better say hello. Buster. <laughs> I, I snapped my thing. That's it. The clown is down. Snap the thing. <laughs> If you move it a couple inches to the left, the cloud will be down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come next. Um, well, his question. Um, <laughs> he's wondering if Boucher will consider building a Dave Gunning signature three fret model. Oh. <laughs> oh. Jeez. Uh, thanks, Cam. <laughs> thanks, Cam. Thanks, Cam. Yeah. We, te- we teased the Dave enough last time. <laughs> yeah. We, we, were, we, had some, we had some tickets for you. But now you can kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Pay to get in, bitch, like everybody else. Making fun of my Dave. Get out of yeah, here. You make fun of Dave just as much. I know, but that's he's my brother. I'm it's allowed like to. siblings. You're allowed to pick that's on right. everyone else's. Yeah. Don't ever pick on my brother. I'm only I'm only allowed to do that. Yeah. No, I'm only teasing you. We can't wait to see you, buddy. And Jack needs to go pee, I think. Dave, would you mind letting him? Well, I can let him out, yeah. Yeah, Jack is Jack is He's been in the house a lot. Fetching at the door there. Yeah. Yeah. What um, do we got now? We got a super chat from Alan Fry. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Uh, thanks for the song, JP and Dave. Sounds fantastic. There might be another one. You never know. Mm. Yeah. We know one more. Yeah. Just mm. one. At least one. At least one. Mm-hmm. I think I can remember one more, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Can I ask? Uh, super chat from Acoustic Guitar Canada. Oh, oh right oh. on. Hey, guys. Uh, Wicked. Hey. Love you guys. Thank you for everything you do. Robin, Guillaume, and Dave in the house. Does it get better than this? Not much. <laughs> Not much. It's pretty cool. We've been having. We've had a lot of fun the last forty-eight hours. Has been incredible. Acoustic Guitar Canada made quite a few nice videos about yep. uh, yeah. Robin. And, yep. Uh, all They're, available on YouTube. That's, that's right. Yeah. Uh, great yep. interviews with Robin. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yep. You guys are incredible. Keep up the good work. Guitar players unite. Mm. That's the way to have her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Chat next. Uh, super chat from local Larry. Local Larry. Mm-hmm. And a boy. As a teacher, when would you introduce your student on how to use a capo? Well, if you were Dave Gunning, you'd actually give the kid the capo first before you even <laughs> saw the guitar. I mean. Uh, <laughs> 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 He'd be like, here, play oh some God. guitar and hand him a capo. Here. Maybe son, you gave him the capo first. Play me blowing in the wind. And there's no guitar, just this. Just this. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 for, for me, you have to have capos immediately because capo, it doesn't matter what kind of guitar player you are, you always are going to end up trying to sing a song in a key. In a chord shape that you want, but not it's not right for your voice. You got to move it around. Also, as, as an as an instrumentalist, they're they're invaluable because there's there's so many things that are done with capos instrumentally that you just can't do without the capo. So you have to learn. You have to teach kids that the capo is an important part of of, of the guitar and also how to use one correctly because some people don't know how they. They put them in the wrong place, or they tighten them too tight and rip, rip the guitar all out of tune, and that has to all be taught because it's part of everything. Mm. It's part of bluegrass. It's part of folk. It's part of the stuff that I do. Like when I, there's some Chet Atkins pieces that I play that have to be capoed because Chet was playing a Gretsch with with super low action, and he was able to do things without the capo. That you just can't accomplish on an acoustic because the action is too high on an acoustic, right? Mm. So you capo it and do it mm. the best you can, the best you you know, the the truest to Chet that you can do it. And then other, there's other things like Doc Watson and all these guys. Doc played. Now here's a great example. Doc Watson played 
fiddle tunes on the guitar because the violinist in the square dance band he played in was not very reliable for one reason or another. And when the square sets would happen, they'd, ha they'd look at him and go, okay, hey, Arthur, uh, you got to play the, play the square set, right? Mm -hmm. And he was playing an electric. He played a Les Paul. And so he played fiddle tunes, but he capoed because he didn't want to play. There's certain tunes, especially in A, that you would not want to play in regular open A. So he'd capo the second fret and play them in G. Mm -hmm. And as his career expanded and he went into acoustic, it just followed him. Mm -hmm. He did all these great tunes, and almost all of them were capoed, Did you right? Put the dogs back in? So you can't get away from the capo. Mm. People laugh at this and say it's a weakness and you don't need it and blah blah blah. That's bullshit. Mm, it's for voicings and tones. Exactly. This this is not this is not this is not a, a crutch. It's something that you need to get the proper voicing and tone and chord structure and and and. and Exactly, just like you said, it's it's it has a lot to do with the difference between playing a song in open A and playing it in A in a G position. There's a whole other, there's two separate voicing choices and and bass run choices and and uh, bass notes over your chord choices that don't exist. Be a short show without one. That's right. They don't exist in A, and some of them don't exist in G. But you pick the ones you like the best, and that's where you play the tune. Mm. Most of the time, you're going to use the capo. Yeah. It's just easier, and it's and it's it sounds better. So, me, I don't think I play one song open in my own show. Maybe one, the Molly May. So you would introduce it quite quickly. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm. I don't think I play a single song open. Two of them, the Molly May and the Stranger. Everything else I do virtually is capoed. Mm. Mm. Kelly's Mountains on the third fret, Charlottetown's on the second fret, uh, and the list goes on and on. The Messenger, second fret and C. Because I have a weird voice. I sing mostly in F and B flat. Right. And you don't want to be playing those with a capo. This, I mean, you could, but it would suck, right? Right. So I capo on the third fret and play an open with a drop D. So when right? when would you introduce that capo to a new as soon, as soon student, as, a new player uh, as soon as they get through their co first chords and major scales and they and they can change chords easily and start to understand what it takes to accompany themselves in a song or they start to learn tunes that i know should be capo because they're in the wrong key with that right. one yeah, that's it instantly thing. say okay well if you're going to play salt creek mm. it's out of the g position but you can't play it open it has to be capoed on the second fret so it's a right so a fiddler can play with you right mm. it's written in a there you go so you have to do it quickly it has to it has to be done mm. it's part the first thing i tell people in master music method which is back up and running by the way as a matter of fact stephen baker is behind the entire thing that that site is up and running. It's in development. It's working. People are on there. You can. It's coming. We're in charge of it. There's nobody else messing around with us. Mm. <laughs> so the first thing I teach in Master Music Method is that on the table, actually, this maybe this very no, it wasn't this table. It was our round one. But when I started the the, the first two videos of the guitar directory, on the table I had laid out all of the things that I would suggest. A rank beginner has never played before mm -hmm. to buy. Mm -hmm. There was a variety of picks. There was triangle picks like this, mm -hmm. standard teardrop picks that were nylon like uh, Dunlops mm -hmm. at one millimeter or better. Uh, some Tortex grippy picks, brain picks, uh, strap mm -hmm. levies because mm -hmm. I got levies and everything I got just about, mm -hmm. and this. As soon as you buy a guitar, you have to buy all those things, mm. and you have to buy a string cutter, like the the thing that the things that just make sense to have, right? If you're gonna if you're gonna be a guitar player, it makes sense to have that stuff. Mm. So you need a winder, cutter, things to change your strings with, mm. picks, capo, strap, good case, yeah. done. There's your kit mm. that'll keep you going forever. You don't need anything else but those things. And a humidifier. If you're sometimes, yeah, most of the times, it's better off to not ever humidify guitars directly. No, you but humidify the room they're in. That's what you're supposed that's to what do. I mean. yeah. yeah, 
So and th we do that here when it's we watch we watch the hygrometer and if it gets weird we we run that humidifier or, or de we use the dehumidifier and the heat pump and the room we, the guitar stay real healthy in here. Mm. So, so quite early. Yeah. There's your answer. Yeah. yeah. It was a, was a <laughs> the, rabbit the hole. The roundabout but, I mean, way to get to that answer. It was a it's rabbit a hole, question. but it was a, it was an, yeah, it's an important it rabbit hole. Yeah. Because a lot of the people that watch our channel are just starting or wanting to start or yeah. edging. Yeah. I'm pushing them, pushing them closer to the edge of buying a guitar and because that's what we want. We want everybody to play guitar. Yep. Everyone should do it. They should just issue guitars oh to everybody. People, especially those people who are <laughs> angry or fighting or pissed <laughs> off. <clears throat> They should just drop guitars over the whole place and let we just. How could you be unhappy? Happy people. Yeah, yeah, you can't be unhappy. Can next. Uh, super chat from Cam McMaster. Clan disaster. Cam. If I bring my JP signature model to Plastown, New Hampshire, will you sign it for me? I never got an official signature to the way it was ordered. Oop. Maybe. Why not? You must, Maybe. You have to. Ah, uh, boy. I hate destroying an instrument like that. That's it an heirloom. Destroy the instrument. It's an heirloom instrument. It's your signature. And on you're going to put my stupid. You're going to mar it with a big greasy sharpie pile of shit with my name on the side of it. Put it on the side. Okay, Maybe I'll do it. I'll sign do the, the It'll add value. You I'll bring do the certificate. I'll do it if you want me to do it, but I I wouldn't ever get anybody to sign that guitar. Not even Robin. I wouldn't do it. It's just so perfect. Why would you put a mark on it? Uh, Maybe on the case or the, the case. certificate the authenticity or something. Well, Robin's actually signed the, the label, so there you got a good signature no, I, there. No, you. Maybe my, mine's He's on it, too, at some point. talking about you. Oh, I know. Right. That but, makes it even worse, mine. <laughs> Jesus. You should sign it. <laughs> I got a great signature. Looks cool. How about Dave signs it? He's famous, more famous than me. He just got nominated for 19 Folk Awards the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> solo artist, male artist, best pizza cook, <laughs> best chicken pizza coop capo. builder of the year. <laughs> pizza delivery. Too. Yeah, yeah. How to how to find it? How to find a Vietnamese restaurant in thirty seconds of the year, guy? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like, he, well, just just get him. I'm sure he'll he'll put a signature. He, he, although I have to warn you, he signs stuff with a jackknife, so <laughs> gotta be careful. <laughs> Next. <laughs> um, a uh, question from Shell Beans. Who? Is Shell Shell Beans? Shell Beans. Shell beans? Yes. <clears throat> That's gonna be new. I don't remember saying it before. Okay. Uh, hi JP, I'm coming to see you in Gorman, New Hampshire, and I can't wait. If I bring a pick, can you initial it for me, please? Yes, I sign all my <clears throat> picks with a hammer. So yes, I will do it. <laughs> 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 the hammer, <laughs> special hammer. Yeah, it just you, maybe you can bring her GP dust me after it's done. Yeah, yeah here's <laughs> your pick. Yeah, I will. I'll try. I'll bring a fine point sharpie or something. We'll figure it out. Yeah, bring her on. Okay, <laughs> next. Uh, highlight the chat from Herschel. Herschel, our Herschel. <clears throat> I believe so. Yeah. Cool. Uh, he says, "Enjoy my SG41. Sounds better every day." Yay! Sweet. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, super chat from Acoustic Guitar Canada. Yeah. Ooh. <clears throat> he says, "Yikes! It doesn't get better than this." There you go. Perfect. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Everything moved. Keep him coming. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm uh, super chat from Michael Easter. Michael Easter. The website mentions the loyalty and teamwork of geese. Beyond the goose series, could Robin talk about how that relates to company values? Oh yeah. Did you catch that? No. He's talking about he's talking about the why you chose the name Goose for the guitar. Mm. Oh, okay, 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 okay. And and how that relates. We've had this conversation today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. But how that relates to the to the relationship with you and the builders and the company, the company's the values of the company, the company's yeah, values, yeah. right? Okay, okay, okay. Want to say a bit about that? Well, uh, first, uh, I live in Montmagny, Quebec. And Montmagny is the capital of snow goose. Okay, so every spring, every fall seasons, the snow goose land. They migrate and they stop. They land at the in Montmagny. Yeah. So first, you know, it's, it, it, it's a part of my life. 
Yeah. Okay. Second, those birds are so loyal. Mm -hmm. You know, they are um, when they when they choose uh, a partner, it's for the rest of their life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are so okay, and uh, when they during their flight. <coughs> You you have a leader, yep. and and the other is uh, as a they Chevron, fly in the Chevron. V shape. Chevron. Chevron. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yep. And that thing fascinate me fascinate me because they 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 fly like that because it. It's very helpful for the 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 the, the goose behind, yeah. you know, okay, for the group. The, yeah. and for the group, yeah, and and they quack, you know, yeah, yeah. quack 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 quack, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and there is a reason for that mm -hmm. because the the geese behind the leader wants to wants to encourage the leader yeah. to fly further and faster, faster. yeah, yeah, you know. So it's that it's a teamwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and you know I, I, how much I am uh, proud of my team, and yeah. uh, I, it's it's always a teamwork at Boucher Guitars. So yeah. it's that's a great the, answer. Well, not many people it, know, know don't many people know those things, but also don't realize that that is part of the mandate listed on your website you talk about why you chose that word and why the animals mm. inspired it mm -hmm. so that's pretty cool that's a good question mm. thank you yeah thank thanks you. thanks robin and thanks for the that was a great thank question a great question yeah. yeah who's next uh we got a super chat from kimball kelsey there you go <laughs> hey bean and jill <laughs> uh what guitars did gunning use on the studio recording of a girl like you beautiful tone It'll go to you, David. Right That's, on the spot. Uh, it was a Stonebridge guitar, like, uh, like um, satin finish, um, mahogany, spruce, and it's a twelve fretter. Yeah, yeah it's a little, it's a little yeah. triple lot thing. I actually it? have it on the road. I, right, I, right. I, mm -hmm. I, I'll take mm -hmm. it. I take it as my standard tuning guitar. Right. Yeah. 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 It's a triple O, isn't it, or double yeah. O? I don't. No. It's a really odd bit. It's not a real, it's not an OM. I, I, I don't know. It's a smaller body. Yeah, it's. I know it's a 12 fretter. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, mm. It, it, it really. Um, it Might sounds be. amazing live. It does. In. It does. And Long scale or short scale? Do you know? Uh, 12 fretter. So. <laughs> 12 fretter. Oh yeah. So well, yeah. So no. Uh, I, 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 I think it's the same scale, but just. Okay. So. Yeah. yeah. Maybe a uh, long scale. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does sound great. Yeah, yeah. That guitar. Yeah. Yeah, good question. That was a good one. Checking out the detail recall on the old man over there. Mm -hmm. yeah, Pop yeah. quiz for Dave. Thanks for the question. Can I, I also ask? played a tenor guitar on that track. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. what That's an old one. A, har yeah, a harmony a K, or K. A K, K, yeah. yeah. That thing's deadly. We used that before. Yeah. On a couple of things. Demos. Okay, next. Uh, super chat from Derek Mosier. Derek, how are you doing, buddy? What song are you and Dave going to play? <laughs> we already played it. Can what, next? what other song are you going to play? Well, we're going to get through all these super chats, and we might do one at the end. Okay. okay. Keep them coming. Um, you know, I might ask for your help with this one, because it's in French. Okay, yes. There you go. <laughs> with pleasure. This is very fortuitous. Oh, so it says, uh, thank you, JP, uh, for uh, superhuman person superhuman being and guitar player that you are thank you robin guillaume and the whole team you guys change our lives wow from alexandre alexandre uh, in france uh, owner of wow. multiple uh boucher guitars in oh, france yeah. wow uh, and thank yeah, you. Alexandre Guitar. Ben Simon, something, something yeah, like exactly. Yeah. Alexandre, uh, yeah. Thank and, you uh, very much. That's wow. amazing. Loving us. Amazing. Oh. Love you. Thank you so much Merci. for that. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Mm. Nice to hear from you. 
that's yeah, incredible. He's a super fan. Uh, that's incredible. Facebook, uh, f- yeah, big big follower. Of that's fans. incredible. Fan. Yeah, he has a no a no M Brazilian. Yeah, he did. Ooh. The last one he bought, he bought a no M Brazilian. Wow. So his last one, got it from a shop in Saint Brieuc. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, nice to have you. Can yeah, cool. uh, Super chat from Jason McCallum. Uh, Jason, <coughs> how you doing, buddy? Are you guys aware of a cradle-style capo that works well with a rounded uh, volute on the back of a Boucher of Boucher headstocks? <sighs> Love my SG fifty-one V, by the way. So this is a Planet Waves cradle, and uh, to be honest with you, I can't use <coughs> cradle capos because they're too <coughs> narrow. And I, li- I often have to capo above the fifth fret, and it's nearly impossible with one of these. And you'll tear up the side of your neck with it, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't use them, and I, and I really don't recommend them, really, because they're not as, uh, they're not as uh, what they're cracked up to be. Mm-hmm. The reason that people use these and the famous ones like Page and uh, all these different high-end, like there's some of these things that are made that are, they cost $300, they're just a capo, and they they claim that the way that this is designed and whatnot makes sure that this only pulls at a certain even tension across. It's bullshit. I've been using Kaisers and Shubs and uh, Shubs cool. Planet Wave uh, thumb screw. Like they're that's what you need. They're those are efficient, mm. especially Shubs are incredibly efficient because you can control the tension. And uh, Kaisers are the best thing for fast change. Boom, dang, it's on and it's off. And it's they wear out. The spring wears out. But Shub, I mean, no, I know Dave uses nothing but Shub. Mm. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason why a lot of us. Uh, I think I think it's on the guitar. It is. I got my Shub on my guitar. He's got my I got so Sorry. now, not to say that if you know, if you if you really are dying to use something like that. I'm not even sure which one to send you to because I've not found one yet that actually is wide enough to be useful <coughs> above the fifth fret. And that's really, I can't use it because I, like right now, I just played that last song with my guitar cape put at the sixth fret and this thing will not fit up the neck that far because the neck gets wider as you go. So that's why I can't, I can't use them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I, and I, 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 as you know, I'm not very opinionated, <coughs> but the, uh, yeah, no strong opinions. Just, I just, that's just your opinion. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. I'm not that's very opinionated, opinion. but so, but I can tell you that this, that this, <coughs> these are, are, have always been just a gimmick. There's, there, it's, it's actually probably one of the worst designs you can get because it's not, if the profile of the neck doesn't fit this exactly, if you're dealing with a hard V, or let's say you're dealing with a custom shop Yeri that has soft C, mm-hmm. a soft V that turns into soft C at the fifth fret. This will never fit the guitar anywhere. It doesn't fit either profile, right? So, I, if you want the, the best, the best cradle that I'm aware of that people use is the, I think it's called the Elliot, but they're three hundred dollars. They're 200, 300, depends on what metal mm-hmm. they use. You get, mm-hmm. And the guy has to build it. It takes six months to get one. No different than this. You buy this at your local store, right? His materials might be better, better steel, better rubber. Probably. But where the rubber meets the road, that has to be changed. You can't keep that on there forever. So, you know, if you're going to use a capo, use one that's... The shubs never break down. The rubbers are easy to replace. Kaisers can be replaced. They're cheap. You can get a couple of years out of one. You throw it away and buy another one, mm. right? It's, so, but you have to have them. You do have to have a good capo. But I'm not. I'm just not sure that's the best. It doesn't work for me at all. Therefore, and not in that application. No, I can't use them. But some people do, and some people love them. So, if you are going to buy one, you're going to uh, that you're concerned about the. The thing fitting the profile of your neck, you're going to have to buy one from a company like Elliot that custom makes this cradle. So you can tell those guys, okay, I have a V-neck, I have a C-neck, I have a, it's extra wide, it's extra deep. Mm-hmm. They will build them, but it's going to cost you. 
Mm. You could buy 10 shoves for what you can pay for that, right? So, good luck. A in mm. Either way you decide to go. <laughs> so, care next. Uh, Super Chat from Greenfin Music. What is it? Greenfin Music. Green That's fin. new. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Okay, maybe, possibly. Mm. Uh, I've got an LL56, an FG9M, and a DYM60HD. Oh! And they're all amazing. The Trinity. But I find myself dreaming about the BG42GM and mm. the GRBG152GM. Mm-hmm. You should stop dreaming and just buy one. <laughs> if you can afford the, the, the 152, uh, uh, yeah. it's uh, a perfect mate to what you've already bought. It is. Th those, those guitars belong aside that boucher. Like his, especially the DYM60. That thing is a mm -hmm. monstrous guitar. And I'm pretty sure he's talking about the one that is at the acoustic shop right now, uh, the Chapman's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because the, the, and, and, and we all, like the 42 is awesome. Like it's a, a awesome mahogany. Yeah. Everybody who played it uh, was floored. Uh, I mean, but, but and the, the Madagascar 152 is, is more money, but it, it has that edge yeah, that, you know. That that yeah. If you can spend the extra couple of thousand dollars, it's uh, it's it's wicked. I would do it. I would find a way to do it. If if for no other reason that you already have three of the best guitars, handmade instruments that you can get out of out of that realm of high high output companies, the DYM60 especially. I can't say enough about that guitar. It's got it's got you know forty year old recaptured mahogany that was sitting in the in the shop at County when 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 Kazuo died they didn't even mm. know it was there mm. and he, they went out and found it and they're still they're, and those guitars are unbelievable I have two of them yeah. I have the DYM sixty which is the the mahogany dreadnought and then I have the all mahogany OM mm. which is a monstrous guitar mm. and then you've got the other ones he mentioned, I don't remember what they are, but as soon as you said what they were, I was like, wow. Hello, mm -hmm. 56. Yeah, the 56. Holy crap. Like, mm -hmm. that's, they're one-off. They're built by one man. The the head of the custom shop builds it by himself. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, this, you're talking, if, if you can buy those guitars, you can buy a Boucher. Because the 56 alone is $8,000. So, you you got to buy a Boucher. You need to have that. That needs to be the complete collection there. I'm right. telling you. There's a Boucher in the middle. Oh, no, okay, right. No, no okay, sorry. Yep. I would definitely, I would <coughs> not continue to dream about that. I would make that a re reality because it's, it would just be such a great addition to what you already got. It just fits. Because I have the same collection. I have the 56, I have the 60, I have... <coughs> 13 bouchers, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> Connect! Yeah, so I have to build a new guitar rack. Uh, question from uh, Seff, S E F F. Seff, okay. Mm. Uh, I'm new here. Hello from NC. North, uh, Col North Carolina? North Carolina, yeah. Sweet. Uh, what would you recommend for a guitarist that wants to learn bluegrass but doesn't like listening to bluegrass? I want to like it, I promise. Well, don't listen to bluegrass. Listen to uh, listen to Doc Watson for one, because he's not bluegrass. He's Americana, and he's trad American folklore. So, like he, his, especially as a guitar player, he was completely abnormal among guitar players when he came out. He was playing fiddle tunes on an acoustic guitar at a speed that was unheard of at the time. Guys like that inspired him directly that you can actually hear his music in Doc's music was a guy named Riley Puckett who was another blind guitarist in the 20s and 30s who played when you hear Riley Puckett play backup for a fiddler it sounds like Doc. Doc copied all that information and took it a step further and actually played melody as well as being just shit hot rhythm player for, for fiddle tunes also, like Doc just did very little bluegrass. Doc did a ton of folklore I music. I wonder when when um, she says she doesn't like bluegrass if it's a certain if it's that certain uh, nasally thing that we sometimes yeah because they they had to sing like that to project in the old dance halls mm -hmm. yeah like mm -hmm. but but a, a, a nice gateway gateway drug into the world of bluegrass might be Alison Krauss. 
because it's mm. so palatable and so pleasant to listen to. Yeah. Mm. But it's real quality bluegrass. Mm. Uh, yeah. That might be the gateway drug to pull you into the rest of the world. That's a, that's mm. a definite yeah. uh, that's a definite mm -hmm. possibility. Mm. But the thing that, from my experience, when I when I when I talk to people, <coughs> people that don't like bluegrass, they <coughs> don't like it because of the repetition. Right. 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 Every bluegrass mm. band to somebody who's uninitiated sounds exactly the same. Trying to fix my head noise, but you get my head noise fixed. Going down to the door, to get my head noise fixed. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing the, 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 the judge thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was feeling blue, with my head noise in view. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to bring this to a close, boys and girls. Uh, we're almost there. <coughs> How many questions have we got left? Uh, a couple. Uh, I got a super chat from oh, Stephen Baker. Stephen Baker? Mm -hmm. He says, I can't wait for my Studio Cobra Chicken. <laughs> studio oh, Studio Cobra, cobra chicken, chicken, yeah. yeah. Yep. We call geese Cobra Chicken. Right? <laughs> yeah. Studio Cobra Chicken, yes. And uh, please take Dave to Arby's for me on your tour. Oh, yeah, we will. <laughs> yeah, we will do that. That'll be the first stop, yeah. Oh, yeah. First place tomorrow for lunch. Yeah, yeah. I like to be the first guy to chew my meal. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got over there? Uh, we got a super chat from Caleb Hawkins. Yes, Caleb, how you doing, buddy? He says, just use a 12-string cradle capo. They're uh, two-inch width. You know, use them on all my wide necks. Well, that's I, what I, I, to I, to I totally that, agree. The you. problem is finding one is a nightmare. I, I, I look for them all the time, actually. When I go into stores, I look to see, uh, I wonder if I find one. Nope. You can never can find, find one. the page one mm -hmm. fairly easily. Well, the pa the best one actually is not page for mm -hmm. that. It's uh, Shub. Makes a cradle capo that's extra wide. I oh. have one somewhere here. Mm -hmm. Also, G7 makes one yep. that's extra okay. wide. But yeah. again, they're impossible to find, right? The well, only reason on I... Amazon? Yeah, it could be. The only, re only way I have them is I got them at trade shows. I was walking yeah, along, right, hey, yeah, try, yeah, try this, try this, and they uh, gave yeah. them to me, right? But I don't even know where they are. They're probably in a guitar case somewhere that I don't use. I don't pull them out because they're not fast enough for me yeah. on stage. Yeah. In the studio, you know, I understand that. Yeah. in the studio, yeah, you yeah. can. They're great in the studio. You have time to mess with them, right? But but if you look on the web, you can most probably find one. Yeah, they definitely do build cradles that are extra wide, but they're mm -hmm. really difficult to find. I wish I could find them. A whole bunch of them, and if you do, they're expensive too. So, connect. Uh, super chat from Andy A. Andy A. Uh, today is Adam's one year anniversary of having his PS one fifty two BGMR. Was able to show Rob in the video of him getting his guitar while at the IBMA. Sweet. Wow. Well, cool. cool. Connect. Right Keep him coming. <laughs> Uh, super chat from Jim Waller. Jim Waller. I wonder if I'm going to see him down in Nashville. Could happen. Mm -hmm. Or somewhere along the way. Uh, just walked in. I want to thank all of you at the table for my new unbelievable SG42 IMG. Which you just got. <laughs> IGM. Yeah. IGM, yeah. <laughs> IGM perhaps. IGM, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This beautiful instrument is unlike anything I own, uh, and an OM is next. JP has me leaning <laughs> towards the SG21. There you go. Yeah. So and cool. This thanks is a for good your story. Farting. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Looked I awesome. saw that on Facebook. Yeah. And, yeah. and this is a cool story. Stephen Boucher, which owns a few Bouchers in the States, drove to Jim's place with all his Bouchers oh, yeah. to make him try. He, he heard about the fact that Lim, Jim was trying to get one. He lives in Maryland. But they both live like fairly close. Yeah. Steve drove a couple of hours to meet uh, Jim, and wow. he ended up basically buying the, the same model that uh, that Steve owns, the, mm. the SG42 GM. Cool. So um, thanks to Steve also, yeah. and very cool. Thanks, Steve. Very, that's, that's magical to me. People who will drive just, just to help Jim find a guitar. Uh, Sweet. That's very cool. That is good. Can I next? Uh, a Paul super chat music. from Fig Cuttings. Fig Cuttings. And it's his first super chat. There you go. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, is it worth selling 15 mid-level Yamahas and Eastmans to get two bouchers from the acoustic shop? Absolutely. Do it. Do it now. <laughs> the last two bouchers that I bought, that's how I bought them. I traded yeah. 11 like guitars for Merlin, and I traded eight for Lancelot. It had to be done. I was just like, okay, that's it. Put them to the load of the car up. Yeah, do it. You'll never be sorry. There's no number of guitars that you could possibly get rid of. 
to get a boucher that will make you sad. Unless you were trading bouchers. <laughs> <laughs> Just get rid of them. Get them out. You'll use the one boucher ten times more often than you would have all the guitars you would have traded. I can guarantee you that. And so, and I know I've done it many times. I've traded out a lot of instruments so I could own bouchers. And I have never regretted I don't even remember what I traded. I don't even care. I picked this up and it's like, Tuh. I have, how many guitars I get trained for this? I don't even remember. But I know I got this. <laughs> yeah, so just do it. Do it, do it, do it now. Get next. Uh, that's the end of Super Chats. The question for the night is, while David and I serenade you with hmm. something Katie, of his... Katie or there is a time... Or what, do what do you got? Yeah, let's do Katie. Yep. The question uh, of the night is, which should be fairly simple, is what is the name? What is the name of the new line of instruments coming out from Boucher in December? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that what you were in? Okay, I, I just moved the capo and didn't have to tune the guitar. <laughs> I, I tuned it at a habit, but I didn't have to make any adjustments. And it's, Bouché, it's a 12 string uh, show. Is that right? Yeah. yeah so Which I just... stole from the table there. <laughs> Wait, there you, is it one of yours? Or... Yeah, I keep a number of capos yeah. available there. I always buy the 12 string ones. Yeah. Mm. We love you guys. next, well, not next week, but soon. I'll well, thank Dave Gunning and Guillaume and Robin for being here. And, uh, we love you guys. And... It was on a summer's afternoon The day before the sun went down A lassie with her brand new gown Came over the hills to Galilee I praised her beauty loud and long Around her waist, my arms are flung. Said, so, my dearie, will you come to see the hills of Gowrie? Like a rosebud wet from morning shower, blooming fresh within the sunny bower. Katie was the fairest flower that ever bloomed in Gowrie.
That's how that one goes, boys. Nice. Okay, Thanks, who had the right answer? Amazing. <laughs> Mike, Mike Leacher says the goose caster. <laughs> the goose caster. <laughs> uh, Mark T had Grand Reserve. Hey, Mark T. Mm-hmm. You are number 41, Mr. Mark. Come so close just again. Mark and the letter T? That's correct. Mark T. sent an email to jpcormier38 at gmail.com just so we have be able to reach him when we do the draw in December. Who's the second one? Uh, Ryan Kaufman. That sounds new, too. Mm -hmm. Ryan Kaufman. Yep, that's new. It is. You're number 42, Ryan. Only eight more spaces left. Ryan, is it K? Yep. K-A-U-F-F-M-A-N. Send us an email, Ryan, jpcormier38 at gmail.com, and we will then have a way to find you when the draw occurs in December, and we start, uh, I don't even know what the prize is going to be, but it's going to be wicked. <laughs> last year it was really wicked, and uh, actually, I don't know what, last year was a dandy. Oh, it was Alvarez, gave us a bluegrass, the MGB60, yeah. So God knows what it'll be this year. Uh, our partners are really good to us, and everybody jumps on board for Christmas for us, and there we go. We had Boucher straps last year, too, didn't we? Possibly. I think we we'll be, might be able to score another one of those somewhere yeah, along yeah, the way. We for, should be able to do that. Yeah, and uh, so there you go, boys and girls. We went 20 minutes over and didn't care. <laughs> Here's to Robin Boucher, <laughs> Guillaume Maybe. De Silva. Here's Special thanks to my Special brother Dave Gunning. Dave. Come on, Dave. <laughs> Good to see you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. That was cool. Love you, David. Yeah, love you too. What a wicked. Very that's cool. wicked. Yeah. We got some miles ahead of us this week. Yeah, we do. <laughs> good to see you guys. Good but it'll be fine. Too, we got our mate. <laughs> yeah. right. Miles are good. Thank you, JP. Yeah, yeah buddy. Thank you, JP. Love, love you too. We'll see you soon. See you soon. Thanks, Robin. Yep. Love you, buddy. Hey. I love playing that quiet with you. I couldn't really hear you that well. Uh, me neither, but I knew it was blending. Yeah. We were being so... <laughs>